This lesson will introduce boundary value problems, which are also called endpoint problems. Consider x double prime plus lambda x equals zero, where x of a equals zero, and x of b equals zero for some constant lambda, where x of t is defined for t on some closed interval from a to b. Previously, we specified the value of the solution and its derivative at a single point. For boundary value problems, we specify the value of the solution at two different points. Notice x equals zero is a solution. It satisfies the differential equation, and x of a is equal to zero, and so is x of b. And therefore, existence of solutions is not a problem. Uniqueness of solutions is another issue. Recall the general solution of x double prime plus lambda x equals zero has two arbitrary constants, and the form of the general solution is based upon the sine of lambda. Recall two previous examples, where one example was y double prime plus k squared y equals zero for some constant k greater than zero. Notice the characteristic equation is r squared plus k squared equals zero, giving us two complex roots, and therefore the general solution is in the form of y equals c1 cosine of kx plus c2 sine of kx. We also had an example where we had y double prime minus k squared y equals zero. Notice here the characteristic equation is r squared minus k squared equals zero, giving us two real roots, and therefore the general solution was in the form of y equals c1 e to the kx plus c2 e to the negative kx. Either case, we had two arbitrary constants. So going back, again, the general solution to x double prime plus lambda x equals zero has two arbitrary constants. It is therefore natural but wrong to believe that requiring two conditions guarantees a unique solution. Let's take a look at two examples. For the first example, we have lambda equals one, a equals zero, and b equals pi, and therefore we have x double prime plus x equals zero, where x of zero equals zero, and x of pi equals zero. Well, once again, notice x equals zero is a solution, but so is x equals sine t. Looking at the work in blue on the right, if x equals sine t, x prime equals cosine t, x double prime equals negative sine t, and therefore x double prime plus x equals zero, x of zero equals zero implies sine zero equals zero, which is true, and x of pi equals zero implies sine pi equals zero, which is also true. However, there are more solutions. The general solution for the differential equation is x equals a cosine t plus b sine t. The initial condition x of zero equals zero forces a equal to zero, which I've shown below in blue. If x of zero equals zero, then zero must equal a cosine zero plus b sine zero, and since sine zero is zero and cosine zero is one, a must be zero, giving us x of t equals b sine t. Letting x of pi equals zero does not give us any additional information as x equals b sine t already satisfies both boundary conditions. Hence, there are infinitely many solutions of the form x equals b sine t, where b is an arbitrary constant. Now let's take a look at another example. Now we'll let lambda equal two, and therefore we have x double prime plus two x equals zero, x of zero equals zero, and x of pi equals zero. Notice the characteristic equation, which I've shown here on the right is r squared plus two equals zero, where the roots are r equals plus or minus i square root two, indicating the general solution is in the form of x equals a cosine of square root two t plus b sine square root two t. Letting x equals zero equals zero still forces a equal to zero, which I've shown below in blue. If x of zero equals zero, just as before we have a cosine zero plus b sine zero equals zero, and therefore a must be zero, giving us x of t equals b sine of square root two t. Applying the second initial condition, which is x of pi equals zero, again shown below, we now have b sine of square root two pi equals zero. In this case though, notice sine square root two pi is not equal to zero, indicating b must also equal zero. Therefore, x of t must equal zero, which is the unique solution. So what is going on here? We'll be interested in finding which constants lambda allow a non-zero solution, and we'll be interested in finding those solutions. This problem is an analog of finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors of matrices, which we'll take a look at in the next lesson. I hope you found this helpful.